Nine months ago, Harry took a well-deserved break from years of reviewing Doctor Who. After gaining acclaim for talking about a TV show that wasn't entirely awful, he believed he could continue transforming his profession from a critic to an analyst. He was wrong. For months, he experimented in a dark basement, exploring and recommending films that he enjoyed, and yet left him wondering why the views didn't match the ever-increasing subscriber count. After a continual assault from false copyright claims, desperation took hold and he started a Let's Play series that made his audience flee by the hundreds. The change had to stop. It's time to stop, okay? He decided it was time to return to routine and find more accessible avenues of content creation that would continue to bring new audiences to the fold. And with the tide of Doctor Who fanaticism on the rise once again, he thought there was no better time than now to talk about one of his all-time favourite episodes of the show. Well, you all know that's a pack of lies, don't you? The episode of choice for this review is what we should call River Song's origin story. Remember how great her first yet final story was back in 2008? Yeah, well, her first chronological appearance is the complete opposite. For clarity, this review isn't going to overanalyze River's needlessly complicated storyline, but more a review of the episode itself and why the overarching narrative of series six makes this episode a chore to watch. Let's start with the opening, where Rory and Amy are driving through a cornfield to find the Doctor. The really weird thing is that the crop circle the Doctor creates just gets shrugged off like we needed another excuse to prove this guy is a bit of an attention seeker. Then we are introduced to River Song. No, sorry, uh, Amy and Rory's child. Uh... Mel, who is not only super unlikable from the offset, but also gets given this long ass backstory that really doesn't seem to have any purpose. Well, apart from introducing a character that Amy neglected to even mention prior to this episode, it feels very strange bearing witness to all this catch up, seeing as it's just something the audience has no choice but to accept at this point. Well, don't worry guys, she doesn't last very long anyway, so just forget about it. Well, it's quite hard to forget about it when you find your teeth grinding over how cringy this whole scenario is. Firstly, let's take a look at just how terrible the child acting is. I've been hiding for hours. Okay. Hi, Mel. Hi, Rory. Because the doctor didn't save it. Except you don't know about the doctor because you're stupid. <laughs> and secondly, how unbelievable they make this Mel character out to be. She supposedly regenerated when she was a toddler, or regenerated into a toddler, your guess is as good as mine. So one would assume she was dropped on her head because that would explain a lot. It gets even better when she's a fully grown adult though because just after the trio reunite in the cornfield, she shows up out of the blue and proves to be a one-dimensional pre River that is essentially River retextured. I just love that she had no other love interests except for her best friend's fantasy man. I'm fantasy man, fantasy man, fantasy man, fantasy man, and this is my associate big chief full of bum boom luck away. Fantasy man, <laughs> that's great, isn't it? Before we progress any further, I have to mention this annoying recap of season 5 that's thrown into every single episode of season 6. It makes total sense for it to be there at the beginning of season 6, but the fact that it basically extends the length of the title sequence, meaning we don't get the really ruins the flow of the episodes. So after eight minutes of catch up, we finally reach the part of the story that genuinely piqued my interest, going back in time to kill Hitler. Not only is the scene in the Fuhrer's office quite entertaining, but even had me laughing right here. Rory, take Hitler and put him in that cupboard over there. Now, do it. Right. 
putting Hitler in the cupboard. This whole segment would certainly have made for a decent hook to suck people into the story, but let's be honest with ourselves, anybody who is watching this episode probably isn't channel flicking. The rest of what happens in this scene truly baffles me. Melody doesn't actually do what she set out to do in the first place, that being kill Hitler as soon as she sees him, and stands so far away from the party she arrived with that she's right in the firing line, causing her to be shot and regenerate into River. It's almost like it was intentional. The flippant use of regeneration in Moffat's series, as you probably are already aware, drives me up the wall as it loses its importance the more it's used to get characters out of sticky situations. Like in this episode, River just regenerates, somehow, to stun off some Nazi officers. Anyway, back in Hitler's office, River pulls the usual I just regenerated dialogue and her true intention is revealed to kill the Doctor. What would seem like a fairly crucial aspect of the story becomes a bit of a joke mere minutes after this is established. In this scene, every time any form of tension around killing takes place is subjected to a ha ha fooled ya flashback that happens so frequently that it becomes just plain annoying. It gets so old, so quickly, but keeps happening again and again. I feel cheated out of a potentially interesting and dramatic experience. To add the cherry on the cake, it's bloody lipstick that kills the doctor. Bloody lipstick! By this point as well, I should mention those weird characters from the Justice Department who, like Melody, well at least initially, are after Hitler's corpse. Their machine, the Tesselector, disguises itself as fictional Nazi officer Eric Zimmerman, who, funnily enough, has a British accent whilst Hitler has a German one. I not only found this whole group's inclusion boring and pointless, but how their system functions is what annoys me the most. When we first see the guys tessellate, it looks like a big operation that takes some time and effort for the transformation to occur. Later on, when Amy and Rory show up on a motorbike though, they've somehow transformed into a copy of Amy off screen whilst riding a bike. More importantly though, why Amy in particular? She doesn't exactly blend in well with the other Germans of that time period. The department also establishes that neither Amy or Rory have any importance to their mission after being rescued from those pathetic jellyfish things. You're not guilty of anything. Aside from producing the Doctor's killer, also, you're gonna change targets to somebody who killed one man over a guy who orchestrated the systemic murder of millions. So after doing a bloody awful job of killing the Doctor, like seriously, if you were bred with that one job in mind and are an open psychopath, you'd at least make sure you finish the job, right? River runs off on a parade of her own making whilst the Doctor is left in the TARDIS to die. Actually, don't worry about that. We need to set up a voice interface with the TARDIS, right? What could possibly go wrong? Oh yeah. These horrific looking PNGs of previous companions are just stuck in there for no reason. They don't even speak, so why have they been shown? The Doctor accepts a voice of an actress the budget can afford, establishing that his regeneration is disabled. Why? Who knows? But there is one temporary cure for his poisoning. Is it Hitler being released from the cupboard? No. Is it Amy or Rory dying so River never existed? Sadly not. The cure for the doctor's poisoning is... Fish fingers and custard! <laughs> now we're at the halfway mark, I would be tempted to stop right here, but the train wreck of this episode just keeps going. River then shows up to a fancy Nazi dinner party, where she demands all their clothes, leaving the guests running around outside in their underwear. I love how the BBC can dress up people in Nazi outfits and dress somebody up as Hitler, but nudity? <coughs> Sorry, that would be extremely distasteful. The Amy clone is about to absorb River, only for the Doctor to come in the nick of time. Isn't it amazing that the TARDIS and the Doctor just magically appeared in the room without any whooshing sounds, wind blowing, or even the sound of the Doctor coming out of the TARDIS with its squeaky door and it closing it behind him. Actually, this nonsense is fairly typical of season six, so I don't really know why I pointed it out. Oh yeah, because nothing is making any sense at this point. Sonic Kane? Wow, I wonder how much use that is gonna get after this episode. Oh yeah, none at all. This arbitrarily 
assigned 32 minute countdown for the Doctor's death doesn't seem to phase anybody in the audience, given that we know he's going to survive this episode so that his death in episode 1 can occur. Matt Smith's shrieks of pains aren't exactly pulling any heartstrings right now, are they? This massively drawn out segment of waffle and being reminded that he's dying every two seconds leaves a lot to be desired. Like, um... What happened to killing Hitler? Finally, how did River manage to shrink the TARDIS so she could fit inside the Tesselector? That's just thrown to the wind as well. Once again, the voice of Amy Pond is magically keeping the Doctor alive, proving to River that he still cares. It makes more sense than most of this episode, to be fair. River seeing the Doctor in pain, she now knows pain, ergo she changes her mind about him. Only thing is, nobody has even tried explaining to her that she is River Song. Instead, this cryptic, nonsensical way around convincing River of who she is comes in the form of the Doctor whispering in her ear and then dying on the floor, followed by River being shown who River Song really is by what I thought was a robot that had been shut down. Uh, never mind, she just intuitively knows that her regenerative abilities can cure him of death, when really all the Doctor needed to do was ask Amy to say, fish fingers and custard, but no, River needs to literally be put in her place in the narrative. So what I mean by putting her in her place is that this is the last of her regenerations, her psychopathy is presumably cured, the doctor lies, there's your book, now you're studying archaeology. Great, sorted, right? Well, we best hope there's a set of instructions inside your diary, dear, and that he didn't just give you a notebook instead of a get well soon card, otherwise you're fucked! They just leave her there in the hospital! Well, at least it's the best one in the universe. They'll conveniently be able to sort her out, won't they? No, you won't. So, did it suck? Well, you probably clicked on this video knowing the answer in mind, but I'll summarise my thoughts all the same. Somewhere during the writing process, I think they had a good idea in mind. Tying in the River Song origin story with the grandfather paradox sounds like a great plan on paper, but in execution creates one of the most confusing and downright frustrating episodes the show has ever produced. With a tiny amount of good things happening at the start and towards the end of the story, they are crushed under the weight of all the shitty things that happen that either don't make sense, cause repetitive strain injury on the eyes and ears, with enough distractions from the main event of attempting to kill Hitler to make one wonder why it was even titled Let's Kill Hitler to begin with. I give Let's Kill Hitler a 2 out of 10. Thanks for watching me old China. You looking forward to series 11? Yeah, me too, weirdly enough. I'll be reviewing that as it comes out, so subscribe to the channel for weekly wacky reviews just like the one you just watched. If you want to join the discussion on our Discord server, the link is in the description. It's got memes, updates from myself and puppies, so check it out. I'll see you there.